Chapter 29 of Pax. Three mice swelled Pax's belly and a muskrat dangled from his mouth, his first large prey. It would feed Bristle and Runt for the whole day. He craved sleep after a long night of hunting, but as usual, he trotted along, weaving path home to confuse any possible predators. The trail... The trail the bleeding runs had left when they moved was still strong enough to mark them as vulnerable. The first rays of morning light lit the grasses. A movement caught his eye. Bristle. She was a few full bounds out in the clearing instead of the apron of the burrow where she usually guarded runt. He watched her bounce up in mock alarm and then tumble kicking into the grass. Then he saw an even more surprising sight. Runt's small head bobbing up. Runt was outside and he was playing. Pax dropped the muskrat and he called to, Runt to Bristle, and Runt turned his head. Pax called again, testing, and Runt answered. He could hear. Pax was washed with relief so overwhelming that he could not move for a moment. Where he had once cared for only one boy, he now brimmed with love for this bristling vixen and her ragged brother, and they were safe. He streaked across the clearing. Bristle and Runt parted to welcome him into the space between them. He dropped onto his back, and Runt toppled onto him, and Pax rolled Runt over gently, listening for any whimper of pain, and heard only purrs of delight. For an hour, the foxes played. Runt rested often, and whenever he did, the other two stopped and flanked him. Like the buttercups beside them, the three fox faces lifted up to the morning sun. Until Bristle leaped to her feet, her nostrils flared. Peck smelled it too, that same threatening scent that had made him anxious for two days. But this was no longer a faint threat in the air. The odor was strong and growing stronger. Coyote! Bristle jumped toward the den, pivoted toward the clearing, and then jumped back to Runt. Pax had never seen her so panicked. At that instant, all three foxes perked their ears sharply to the same spot in the woods, to the careless branch rustling of a creature that did not heed the advantage of stealth. Heading north, up from the gorge, heading for the clearing. The coyote was following Runt's trail. Bristle nosed her brother upright and screamed at Pax, Guard him! Pax herded Runt into the den. Pacing the entrance, he watched Bristle head towards the rustling, stiff-legged and wary, and stop. She pricked her ears, her rump high. And then in front of her, at the precise place where the junipers were still compressed and dragging Runt in, a dark, brindle coyote emerged, his head to the ground. Bristle barked. The coyote's head snapped up. Bristle barked again and jumped into the clearing. The coyote cocked his head and took a step toward her. He lowered his nose to Runt's trail again. A deep instinct urged Pax to run away. The coyote was a tall, heavily muscled male. A fox was no match for an animal that large and aggressive. But a deeper instinct reminded him that Runt was defenseless in the burrow. Bristle ignored the instinct to flee as well. Instead, she tore straight towards the coyote, lunging at its flank. The coyote spun and snapped, just clipping Bristle's back foot. She limped into the clearing, whining as if she'd been injured. The, st the coyote studied her, but then he shook himself, recognizing the ploy, and dropped to the scent again. Bristle flew back. She jumped in front of the coyote's path and faced him. Her spine arched. From her throat came a coarse howl that Pax had never heard before. For an instant, the coyote pulled back. Seeming surprised, the small fox was engaging him. Then he bunched back his shoulders into full attack position and bared his teeth. Pax's body stiffened. A growl rattled in his throat. Runt whimpered in the den. The coyote sprang at Bristle and knocked her to the ground. For a moment, Pax saw nothing but fur and teeth flashing in the grass and heard only yips and growls. But then Bristle scrambled out of the coyote's hole. She leaped towards the center of the clearing, a single leap only. Pax understood that she was luring him away from Runt. Staying out of his reach, she baited the coyote until she reached the sweet gum tree. Then, just as Pax had done, she leaped up onto the slant of the trunk. She padded out into the first branch carefully, never taking her eyes off the growling coyote who followed on the ground. When she reached the spot where the branch split, she was well over his head. She hissed a taunt. The coyote jumped. He clawed only bark and leaves. He circled in the hollow under the branch looking for higher ground and then jumped again. This time his forepaws caught the branch and for an instant before he fell back. 
he gathered himself and leaped again. Pack saw that Bristle was as far on the limb as she could go. The coyote would tear her from the tree soon, or grow impatient with her distractions and return to the trail she diverted him from. She would follow and fight until he ripped her apart. Stay, Pax ordered Runt, and he tore across the clearing. That's the end of 29. See you in 30.